Hey, Sue, says Carly logged on? Uh, oh, yes. Okay. So, so many parties, so many people are as part of it. Yes, she's, she's here. She's, um, she's joining right now. There she is. We don't have Mr. Park, so he's not. He's there, Stephen. Where? Okay, uh, the 37th Circuit Court is now in session with the Honorable Brian K. Kirkham presiding. Today is Wednesday, March 15, 2023 at 1.35 p.m. These are cases 2021-2953 GM, Corey Dillon, and 2021-2954 GM, Charlie Dillon. Attorney Kamikudolsky represents Guardian. And Jennifer Reed represents Harvey Dillon. And for DHHS, we have Savannah Anderson, Kelly McCall, and Stephen Parks, Garden at Lightning. Okay. Good afternoon to everyone. Hey, Judge. Good morning. Or afternoon. Okay. It's been a long day, huh, Miss Reed? Yeah. Oh, it has been. Yeah. Uh, well, this is uh, the uh, six month review of the uh, court structured uh, guardianship plan, but it's been longer than six months based upon what I see from the record. Uh, I do note as well, I would say we have a number of uh, uh, potential uh, reports, et cetera, to accept in this matter. And I note that uh, I believe my office received a phone call from uh, Ms. Anderson uh, just not too long ago stating that she had a, an additional report we wanted to know if we wanted it sent to the court. Uh, we declined that because it had not been sent to any of the attorneys in this matter or the guardian ad litem. So the court would not uh, consider it with the fact that uh, it has not had opportunity to be reviewed by all of the uh, interested parties in this particular case. I guess I'll open up to Ms. Podolsky because you represent the guardian and you're kind of the first person on the list. So. Uh, What's your, what's your position on the uh, review today? Your Honor, it's our position that the guardianships should continue. Um, based on the reports, there continues to be uh, much work that needs to be done on the relationship between uh, mother and minor children. Um, I do believe the court is in receipt of the report from Mr. Bosher, who is the minor child, Corey's um, counselor, I believe that was sent to um, counsel today as well. Um, I have spoken with Mr. Bosher. I've spoken with my client. Uh, Mr. Bosher is willing to conduct counseling between mom and the minor children, um, specifically Corey. He is older, um, but being Corey's primary counselor, he has a rapport with Corey. He has had sessions with mom before. Um, and we believe that would be appropriate based upon that relationship Corey has with him. Um, Corey is comfortable with him, and we believe that would create um, a good therapeutic setting for them to work on that relationship and bond. Okay. Uh, Ms. Reed, what's, uh, what's your position in this matter? Um, we would agree that the guardianship can continue at this time. There were issues with my client participating with Mr. Bosher as she had requested to participate in those counseling sessions, but the guardian had refused to allow her to participate in those because he would have to pay for them. And so that's why mm -hmm. counseling sessions were set up between my client, Corey, and Sandy Burdick. So I don't know if we want to have both of the counselors work together and collaborate a little bit to see what's going on or if we want to transition to just one counselor okay thank you mr parks uh court will note that uh, mr parks has filed a uh a guardian ad litem report dated uh february 21st 2023 the court's reviewed and i believe each of the parties have had as well uh mr parks what's your position uh for today well, I think my observations and concerns that are addressed in my report. Um, 
And it's my understanding that the only thing before the court is a guardianship review. It seems to be working right now. Um, and I would also suggest that the guardianship should continue. Um, although I do believe it is imperative that uh, Corey and his mother do more counseling. Um, even though things are, I believe, significantly better than they were once or years ago, um, I, I just get a sense that there is a lack of trust here um, regarding mother. Um, and even though she has done a significant amount of work and put herself in a very good position, um, I believe there is more work to be done with uh, the relationship between Charlie and his mother. It's, it's not horrible, but he just has a lot of mistrust. And I, I believe counseling would be very, very important in moving this case forward. Okay. And uh, Ms. Anderson, I guess I'll open up to you as well on behalf of uh, DHHS. What's, what's your position? Uh, my recommendation was that the guardianship be terminated and the children be allowed to return to the care of their mother. Um, Carly is actually, she's done an amazing job. I've spoken to both children. Um, their concerns regarding returning to the home um, were mainly regarding switching schools um, and mom feeding different foods than what they're used to at grandpa's house. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Well, the court will note uh, the court has before me the uh, Dr. Haugen's report, report, which was filed back on uh, 8 30, 2022 in which he uh, states that uh, meaning mother has maintained sobriety, has engaged in treatment and services, and appears to be progressing well at this time. His recommendation was for continued visitation, that she maintains sobriety. Uh, the court notes that the uh, court has before me too, uh, Matt Bosher's uh, report dated 2-20-2023, in this uh, particular matter. Court has a uh, counseling service assessment and treatment plan report from uh, Sandra Purdy uh, covering the period, uh, well, actually covering the period of 12-1 through 12-31, 2022, in which uh, she has recommended continuing with counseling and that, uh, again, that uh, mother and uh, Mr., basically uh, Mr., Dylan, I believe, would be uh, worked together as the children transition to her care. Court was note that I have received the uh, forensic fluid lab report dated 11-21-2022, uh, uh, filed uh, February of this year, showing that it has uh, been positive for uh, THC. Court's report is stated the court has the uh, guardian ad litem report. And uh, in the guardian ad litem report, the court notes uh, that uh, Mr. Parks has stated that uh, uh, Mr. Dillon does not have faith in the mother's ability to remain drug free due to a past repeated relapse. Uh, that relapse I think occurred back in 2021 based on my review of the file. Uh, basically uh, the report states as well, that uh, Mr. Dillon does provide the children with a good stable home environment and children have done well in his care. Um, Ms. Anderson has filed a report uh, dated February 6, 2023, in which she recommended the return as she stated, recommended a mother continue with her counseling with Danielle Acker and that Corey continue with Matt Busher, Bosher. And the court does note that I have received a uh, letter from Danielle Smith dated 2-14-2023, uh, which she has recommended reunification with mother. And again, then the last, I have a counseling service assessment treatment plan report from Sandra Bullock dated 1-31-2023, where she recommends the family counseling increase and that the mother maintain uh, sobriety. I think those are all the reports. Uh, Ms. Podolsky, do you have any opposition to the court uh, receiving the
those reports into evidence in this matter? I do not. Ms. Reed? I do not. And Mr. Parks? I do not. And I guess I'll ask uh, Ms. Anderson as well. I do not. Okay. The court will uh, receive in as, as exhibits those particular reports and put those in the uh, record in this matter. Uh, when I do review those, I do note, as stated in this case, that Mother has been making substantial progress. Uh, in fact, uh, I would have to say it's, for cases like this, I would have to say it's an incredible progress based upon uh, assessing it against other cases, but it does appear that uh, the experts in this matter uh, do recommend additional counseling and based upon what the court sees, although there's been uh, effectively a, over a year and a half of uh, continued sobriety, the court would like to see an additional period of time. So what the court is going to do in this matter is simply uh, continue the uh, guardianship at this time, and uh, then we will bring it in for an additional six month review. And uh, at that time, we have the ability to reassess it uh, the court will order to, that there be continued counseling as recommended by almost everyone in this uh, particular matter. And that uh, we again, look at, uh, again, as well as everything's progressing, that we continue to move towards uh, reintegration and reunification in this uh, particular matter with the, uh, I guess, the uh, continued involvement of all the counselors in this uh, particular matter. I think as Mr. Park stated, it'd probably be appropriate that uh, the uh, counselors would start to coordinate and work together in this uh, particular matter to uh, at least have input from each other so that uh, that comes into play in their recommendation. Uh, with that in mind, Ms. Podolsky, anything else that you believe that we need to address today? I would just want to ensure when we're talking about continued counseling, the orders also direct that um, the guardian and the mother are to participate in counseling together. Um, I understand that while that has started, there have been appointments that have canceled, um, have been canceled that has not been consistent. We would like to see that be consistent. And if that means it needs to be with a different counselor, um, that is fine. My client is open to that um, because I think this relationship is also just as important because um, the orders do state that this guardianship will not terminate until there is a grandparenting time schedule put in place. And I mean, this is a parent-child relationship between the guardian and mother as well. Um, so we do believe that that relationship is also very important. So if that means we need to get a new counselor involved for the two of them, um, so be it, but that counseling needs to get on track and continue. Well, okay. Uh, my inclination, I guess my position is we've got enough counselors in this case already that uh, I, I don't see the utility of adding in an additional counselor. I think obviously from the individuals that are involved in this case already, if they begin to coordinate and discuss amongst themselves, some sort of a coordinated approach that uh, we should be able to accomplish that. But yes, Ms. Podolsky at court will order that uh, the guardian and the mother would participate in some sort of uh, joint counseling with the idea that we want to move forward, as I stated, for uh, reunification, reintegration, if you would. Uh, and I think that's going to be necessary that we have both of those parties involved to be able to do that. So that would be uh, an order of the court as well. Thank you. Ms. Reed, uh, what's your position or is there anything else you believe we need to address today? In my reading of the reports, it sounds, and I would agree with everybody, that there's some trust issues between especially Corey and my client. And right now she has standard parenting time and I would request within this next six months that as part of this reintegration and trust building with the help of the counselors, that her parenting time would also increase. Well, I obviously hope that that, I guess uh, I'll leave that to you, Ms. Reed, if we get uh, some updated reports from the counselors and they recommend some uh, 
uh, I guess you say, increased schedule that we can review that. And we can do that if you want. Uh, we could do it through a, a status conference or something so we don't have to wait until the six month review. And I'll leave that up to you, Ms. Reed, to uh, initiate, if you would. Okay. Okay. Mr. Parks, anything else uh, on behalf of the uh, guardian ad litem? No, thank you. Okay. And Ms. Anderson? I would agree with Ms. Reed that the parenting time should be increased. Um, after speaking with all of the, the children and the mother, um, there is still some issues that they need to work through. However, I don't think that those are going to be met um, by every other weekend and one day a week. Okay. Well, like I say, we'll leave it open to uh, the counselors to make, the various counselors to make recommendations. The court okay. will consider it at that time when uh, we can get everyone together for a status conference and hopefully uh, move forward. I, I guess with that, uh, the court will, uh, again, Ask, I guess I'll ask Ms. Podolsky that you would prepare an order from today's hearing and uh, submit that under seven day and uh, that will be able to uh, conclude the matter. And we will end this hearing at 1.50 p.m. You're free to go, have a good day and uh, we will hopefully we'll hear back from you in a reasonably short time. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Let's move on to our okay. We're moving on with the tea garden case, Judge. And that order is in your field okay. the road number. Please un unmute uh, Alexis. Okay. Can you both hear me now? Hello. Doesn't seem like anybody can hear you. Dory, can you hear me? Dory? They are unmuted. Hello. Can you, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, and Jory, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, and Alexis, we cannot see you right now, but we'll, we'll go ahead and call yes. it. Yes. Yeah, something must be wrong with your video. <laughs> okay, this is case 2022-1000 DM, Alexis Teagarden versus uh, Jory Teagarden. Today is Wednesday, March 15, 2023 at 1.52 p.m. Good afternoon to uh, both of you. Uh, Ms. Teagarden, we're going to start with you first. I'll ask that you would raise your right hand. We'll have you sworn in, then we'll take some testimony from you. Okay, there, there we go. Uh, do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give shall be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Are you able to hear us? Ms. T. Garden, are you able to hear um, us? Yeah, it's now? kind of going in and out. Let me. Are you able to hear me? We're able to hear you now, yes. Can you hear okay. us? Yes. Okay. Why don't you try swearing again and we'll go from there. Okay, all right, okay. Let's try one more time. Raise your right hand, please. All right, do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give shall be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Ms. Teagarden, you file the uh, action seeking to have the child determined not to be issue of the uh, defendant in this matter and not issue of uh, your marriage uh, in this uh, particular case. And would you explain at this point uh, 
why why do you believe that that is the case so jory and i had been separated for um a bit over a year at the time of conception um i was seeing somebody else we are still together he is actively involved in the child's life and between myself the defendant and the biological father whose name is cody there has never <laughs> been any argument against the child's father okay so the child i don't have a date of birth on the child that uh uh, Noah's, what, what is that? October 13th of 2022. Okay. So it's fair to say that uh, conception was sometime in approximately January of 2022, correct? Uh, yeah, give or take January, February. Okay. And uh, during that time, at the time of conception, or you had you engaged in any sexual relations with the defendant? No. And as you said, it was you said it was probably over a year that you'd been separated, although in the petition it says that you'd been separated approximately two years. So for the record, what was it? Is it a year or was it two years? I think the two years when I had noted that originally was at the time of birth. Um, our separation date is January, I want to say 13th of 2021. I know it's January of 21, though. Okay. Okay. And uh, in this matter, uh, the alleged father is Cody Glenn Lambert. Is that correct? Yes. And... Uh, Mr. Lambert, you say that he's carried on a relationship with the child. I think yes. you put in the petition, you say from the time of conception through yes. the current time. Is that correct? That is correct. And as Mr. Lambert, likewise, has he taken uh, uh, financial responsibility for the child, both during your pregnancy and after birth? Yes, he has. And has he carried on a normal child parent relationship after the child was born yes he has anything else that you would like to add or um so the paternity test between noah and jory has come back that there's a zero percent chance that he is the father um cody took his portion of the paternity test february 14th of 2022 and we have not received the results yet, um, but those should be here because it's been about three weeks any day now. Okay. 2023. 2023, thank you. Yeah. Okay, you said 2022 <laughs> and I got thinking that's a long wait, so I- <laughs> no. Right, yeah, okay. no. I, I, I agreed. Yep. Okay. Well, in this, uh, in this particular matter, the court does note that uh, I have received in the, in the file is the DNA, Diagnostic Center report dated January uh, 19, 2023, in which the uh, test results show that the uh, defendant has a 0% probability of paternity. The court will note that is signed by John W. Peterson, who PhD and the lab director of DNA Diagnostic Center. I'll ask you, uh, uh, Mr. Teagarden, are you do you have any opposition to the court accepting that DNA test report into evidence? No, I don't. That's fine. Um, I believe it's not my. I believe it's not my child. So, okay. the court will admit that DNA test report showing zero percent probability of paternity. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Teagarden, I'm going to have you sworn in. We'll take some brief testimony from you. Okay. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give shall be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. Mr. Teagarden, you've heard the uh, testimony of uh, Ms. Teagarden in this matter. And uh, do you believe to be, or believe that that uh, testimony is consistent with your understanding of the facts in the case. Yes, I believe that we've been separated since January and then uh, 
that we there was no way that it could be mine. Um, I okay, I mean, pretty much everything that, I agree with that she. Prior to prior to your separation uh, in January of two thousand twenty. Uh, 21 or 20, 21. 20, uh, 20, 21, yep. Yeah. Prior to that time, when would you say or when you identify would be the last time that you engaged in sexual relations with the plaintiff? Um, it we actually it would have to be after we had separated. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure on the date. I know it was way before October though. Um, and it was a year, it was before her and Cody were actually together. Okay, so it was after separation though, but uh, before that year. Yeah, before so, they got, I believe they got- July together, of 2021. I believe they got together in, yeah, yeah. I believe they got together in December of 2021. 20, and uh, it was prior to that. And then they didn't have a baby until 2022 in October. Okay. Let me ask you, have so you- I, uh, I think she's right. Okay. Have you, uh, since the time, well, prior to uh, the date of birth of the child or any time after, have you in fact carried on any sort of a parent-child relationship with Noah? No, I have not. Have you taken any financial responsibility for Noah after, well, prior to or after his date of birth? No, I have not. Okay. Ms. Teagarden, do you have any questions for the defendant? We no, lost. sir. I'm sorry, ma'am. We Hello? no. Is that correct? You have no questions for a defendant. Okay, we're we're not we're not hearing you at all, ma'am. Yep, I have no question. Okay, thank you. Anything else, Mr. Teagarden, that you would like to add in this matter? No, uh, no, I do not. Okay. Okay. Ms. Teagarden, uh, do you have any uh, closing statements to make in this matter? No, sir. Okay. Uh, Mr. T. Garden, anything you have? No, no, I didn't. No, um, okay. Okay. Well, what to do? The court will make the uh, following finding in this matter. Uh, I've heard testimony from plaintiff. Plaintiff has stated that, uh, in fact, the parties had been separated for over a year prior to the conception of the child, which would have occurred sometime in approximately maybe. January of 2021, uh, that in fact, uh, she's testified that uh, the alleged father, Cody Glenn Lambert, in fact, uh, has uh, taken responsibility for on behalf of Noah Brian Lambert, that in fact, he's carried on a parent-child relationship with the child, that uh, there's no doubt in her mind that he is in fact the biological father of, of Noah, and uh, that the defendant has not had any sort of a relationship with the uh, minor child in this uh, particular case. Court will note that the uh, defendant has confirmed that uh, the parties had engaged in sexual relations after their separation, but that it was substantially before the date of conception would be, and uh, the court also notes that the court has uh, admitted into evidence the uh, DNA Diagnostic Center report of January 19, 2023, which shows a 0% probability of paternity for the defendant 
in this uh, particular case, which has been admitted, the court will therefore determine that Noah Brian Lambert is a child born out of wedlock and that issue of this marriage and of the defendant in this case. And uh, as a result, the court will, I'm looking at the, uh, the order in this uh, particular matter. I have to change. Okay. I'm just making the modifications to the order that I have to make. I will terminate the uh, support obligation effective the date of birth as well. Okay, I've uh, finished up that order. Uh, it will be down to the uh, clerk today if you should want that, uh, get a copy of that, Ms. Teagard, so you can proceed. And uh, that will conclude the case unless there's anything else that you have, uh, Ms. Teagard. Uh, no, sir. Mr. Teagard? No, sir. I'm okay. okay. Thank you both. Uh, the court will conclude this matter at 2.06 p.m. You're free to go. Have a good day. Thank you. Uh, mention, you too. Case, now that this has taken place, uh, there, we've already preserved proofs for this divorce. So the final orders can be sent to you and basically okay. close the. Okay. Ms. Teagarden, as in the divorce action, as staff has stated, we've already taken proofs. Did you put a provision in the uh, judgment? In which uh, what, what the court's done here is excluding uh, Mr. Teagarden as uh, the father. Um, when I originally filed, I was not pregnant or not aware that I was pregnant. At least um, I did modify that later on when I requested full custody that I was pregnant. Um, but at the time I wasn't aware that we had to do okay. the separate hearing. Well, that's fine, but I wanted the provision in the judgment that would in fact determine that no is not issue of this marriage a child born out of wedlock. So I'll ask, even though we're putting in here that we've revoked the uh paternity, I would like that provision, the judgment, just so we have it and uh there's no issue in the regard to that case as well. Okay, I do know that I have Grayson listed. I don't believe Noah is listed on the paperwork at this time as he was not um, well, born at the I time. I understand that, I that but I still want that so provision in the judgment so that it's not an issue at a later date. Right. Do I need to revise and resubmit yes, a you judgment? Yes, you'll then? have to do that. Does she also need to see a uh, Okay. Again? Uh, I won't. We have an FOC approval. I won't make you get that again because it's not going to be, it's not going to really be uh, something that uh, they need to address at this point in view of this proceeding as well. Okay. So just resubmit it to the court and we'll get it entered for you and get that completed. All right. Perfect. Thank you. You have a good Thank day. You. All right. You too. So Judge, just one more thing. I'm not sure if you want to mention something on the record, but we had another 
Rova hearing set in the Mitchell case, yep. but neither party appears. Okay. Yeah, let's call it one. Okay. I've got my notes on that. All right. Um, for case 2022-631, the M. Amanda Mitchell versus Joseph Mitchell, the court will address the following words okay. at 2.09 p.m. Okay. Thank you. Court notes that uh, in this matter as well, there is also joined a, a third party defendant, uh, Michael G. Beck, in this uh, particular case. And uh, the court uh, notes that it is now, uh, time wise, it's now 2.09 p.m. The matter is set for 1.30, that neither of the parties have. Uh, uh, appeared today in fact none of the parties even the third party defendant has not appeared in this uh, particular matter so the court will uh, simply not take any action on it at this time if we don't uh, what we'll do is the court will send out a uh, notice of dismissal providing them with uh, 28 days to uh, of, of again to take action or have the matter dismissed and then we'll proceed in that in that manner. So that will